All right, what's up everybody? So today we're gonna be doing some lettering. Um, I'm not gonna freehand it on him. It's gonna go on his inner bicep. We already did one recently. So he wants to match the exact same size. So I'm gonna make sure that I draw it out on a book first. And then I'm gonna run it through the printer, make sure it's the same size. I don't want to freehand it and then it's too big or too small and then I have to erase it and draw it again. So as you can see I put border lines. There's already lines but I just still made my border lines to make sure that's how I kind of wanted it. I'm kind of just kind of sketching out what I feel I might want. The name's Nicole. I would recommend getting these type of this type of book with the lines and everything, the squares, like the graph, the grid, paper. And right here, just kind of like a like a quick kind of sketch. Just trying to kind of get a flow of what I want to do. Usually as soon as I'm done with this sketch, I show it to the client, see what they like, what they don't like, get their opinion, and then we go from there and they let me know if they want to add something, if they want to take something off, if they want to change a certain letter. Alright, so before we get into all the questions you guys left me on Instagram and I don't think there was really any on YouTube. We're gonna have a quick story time since I'm drawing um, these letters on this book and it reminded me of a time when I was um, tattooing at the last shop I was at. Um, one of my clients, or it wasn't even one of my clients, it was the first time I was gonna tattoo her. She wanted a name on her last name on her arm. So, um, came in, I started drawing it. I forgot what the last name was, but it was her last name. I draw it, everything's correct, I put it on her. She looks at it, she likes it, except she goes, oh, can you change this letter up or or move the flow, change the flow a little bit or something. I forgot what it was, but. Um, I go back, I redraw it, I put it on her. She looks at it like two, three times. I tattoo it, we're done. Maybe about like 10 minutes pass. She calls me and I'm thinking, oh, maybe she forgot something or something, whatever. She goes, the last name is misspelled. I think my heart dropped. I felt like, I felt it in my stomach. So the first thing she goes, it's not your fault. She says, I looked at it, I said it was correct, I know, but, the, but I still felt like it was my fault. I felt like I should have, I don't know if it was, I should have caught it or I don't know what it was. I wasn't sure, I didn't know how I messed up because I thought I spelled it correctly. So I started telling all the other guys at the shop and then one of the guys goes, it's my fault. And I was like, how is it your fault? Like, it made no sense on how it would be his fault that I misspelled the tattoo. He says, I grabbed your book where you were drawing, I switched the page up, and then I wrote, or on the same page, I wrote the name incorrectly. So me, as I went back to draw it, I was looking at the, the name he wrote, the reference he wrote on top, and it was spelled incorrectly. So I copied that, thinking it was what I wrote earlier, which was correct. So, I guess um, the owner, the wife ended up hearing and they're saying, oh, call her so we can help her with like a laser removal or something. Then I tell them, she actually liked this. She called me to tell me that it was misspelled, but that she loves it still. And that was the first and the last time I ever misspelled a, a word or someone's last name or something. But I don't know, comment down below. Let me know if you had anything 
that was similar. You misspelled something, or people have gave you the wrong um, name or something. But yeah, ever since then, now I ask the people like three, four times. I tell them keep checking it, Google it, because you never know. Like, it might seem correct, everyone thinks they're right, it might be misspelled. But that's probably one of the like the worst feelings I've had when I was tattooing. Besides like messing up a tattoo, but I felt like back then messing up a tattoo was like bound to happen. I would let people know like I'm barely starting or stuff like that or something wouldn't come out how I wanted it to, but that was just like that was gonna happen regardless. Yeah, you can see as I'm still trying to figure out a flow. Now I'm gonna do all the flourish. If you guys don't know all this extra stuff on the bottom, the squirrels and stuff, it's called flourish. I feel like that always makes um, some good lettering if, if you like it. A lot of people just like it simple. But I always like the flourish and you gotta make sure it flows. As you can see, I kind of whipped it all around and it goes up into a, like a circular, goes down to like, just like you see right there, I'm pulling that line. And you see how there's like that flow. You gotta make sure it flows in the same way. I know a lot of artists, they don't really do it like that, especially if you're barely starting. They don't really have a flow to it. It looks kind of like, flat my head's in the way but if you feel like your, your flourish is still flat follow copy someone else's and switch it up you know most people copy everyone unless you were born like years and years ago and you were doing this already there's no way like any newer artist or artist that I've been tattooing 10 to 15 years invented type of flourish it's always it's been invented people have done it already might have seen it but someone's done it there's no way we were the first ones you know you might come up with a different style that might be a little bit different a little bit newer change it up a bit but like I said get that flow correctly don't be scared to try something new you just erase it but now I'm stenciling it I got the stencil paper under it now I'm really like doing all the lines that I am gonna do for sure. As you can see, I changed up the end, the flourish got messed with it a bit. I'm using a pen. I had this other pen so that I was using to like uh, stencil, but I started liking this pen. It works pretty good. And then for all you guys, I don't even know, what, I think it's a big or something, but Whatever you guys find comfortable to um, stencil, use that. There's no um, special thing that's not gonna help you do a better stencil. For me, this does help me do a better stencil because I'm comfortable with it. Other people, they could use a pencil or whatever they find comfortable to use. And especially with a stencil, always just make sure your stencil is completely correct. Make sure it's the best stencil you can have. Everything is clean, everything is ready to go. You don't want to have to add on top of the stencil after you've already put the stencil on. There's no reason for that. I see a lot of artists, like they'll do a stencil of like black and gray or something and they won't put all the details. Alright, so now my ear is in the way. But anyways, always find that flow. Alright, I'm gonna start the questions right now since my ear's in the way. Let's start off with... How did you learn how to draw script lettering? 
So, um, I think growing up, a lot of people always did a lot of graffiti around me. It was always lettering. So that just kind of influenced me to always do lettering also, since I was younger. So I've always been into like doing a lot of lettering and I think even one time one of my teachers when I was younger told me that um, I had to hold the pencil a certain way to do cursive. And then I told her I couldn't do it like that. And then um, she got mad that I was doing it incorrectly. And look at me now. But anyways, um, Yeah, I just kept practicing throughout the years. Just kept going, looking at other artists, imitating and changing it up along the way. And I've always liked it. I think that's what kept me um, learning. I've always just liked it. And then, let's see. How to create a good stencil. So I kind of talked about the stencil earlier. It's just, um, just follow everything. Once you put your stencil on, it should look like it already. Like if it's a portrait, that stencil should look like the portrait already. All right, so before all this, so I did a quick outline on the um, on the tattoo, a quick outline just to get it in real quick, just so I, I could get rid of the stencil. But um, I was recording it earlier, but um, my head was in the way, my hand was in the way, I was recording it weird. So at this point, like I'm using a seven run liner, I'm kind of double lining those edges and then filling in with a seven uh, curve mag, all black. So right there, I kind of just pack it in. I use the wider side and go forward with it, as you can see, or backwards. And it's quick one pass, fill in with a good amount of pressure. Don't be scared to get it in there. You know, just take your time with the black. Right there, I'm using a three round liner, making uh, that break. Making that other break right there real quick, three round liner. I use a three round liner, a seven round liner, and a seven curve mag. Right there, I'm just fading away. I start off with my lighter tone. Oh no, actually I use black. I use black to shade this whole thing, the actual letters. It's just hand pressure. I'm using a light pressure and then right there I start coming in with more pressure like a, as if I am going to um, pack in the black. But as you can see that lower part, it's a light, it looks light, but it's black. It's just all pressure. At the end of the day, everything's just how much pressure you put in while you're tattooing. Hand pressure and then the angle like I feel I try to keep it upright as I can. It has a little bit of an angle to it, but for the most part it's upright, the machine, as best as I can. I'm using a, a Cheyenne Hawk Pen. And another one was how to create soft blends with your tones, but like I said, it's all hand pressure. Hand pressure right there, you see, you can see I'm just slowly easing into the skin building it up so just the fade it's practicing your fades you know From dark to light they're packing in the side of black leaving a little break on the side and then someone said what tattoo machine do you recommend and why I don't really recommend any machines besides the one I'm using, the Cheyenne Hawk Pen. I feel like I've used other ones, but I feel like this one, like I could tattoo a little bit faster with it. It's a little bit stronger. I feel like it's faster than other tattoo machines, and it works good for me. Um, you just got to figure out what you like and what works good for you. Just try out different machines and see what works best. So I'm gonna say what styles to do for the best improvement in tattooing or just do everything. Um, I would say whatever it is that you want to improve in or be better at, put your concentration into that. That's what you're gonna get the most improvement on what you put your time on. 
you know, invest your time into what you feel you should and you will get the results you want. So what's the types of lettering in your type 5 lettering style? Uh, I already have uh, my top lettering styles. I feel like cursive is always like a cool one. Um, there's these other styles. I don't, I don't really know a lot of names for the styles that I do or for ones that I like. I don't know what they're called. I gotta figure out what, what they call them, but it's because they're all like different weird styles that people just do or that I've messed with. Tattoo tips for beginners. Um, I would say learn as much as you can. Don't worry about the money. The money will come. Just practice, practice, practice. Try to be around the best people you can be around from tattooing to like you know the clean, um, how to be clean. You want people like that around you too. Like keep clean while they're tattooing. Know how to break down correctly. Even just positive people. You want to be a po around positive people just in life in general. Even in tattooing, you don't want to be around someone that's always sad or this and that. It'll bring you down. But yeah, for sure. Once you're starting, just put it to work. Don't cry about anything. You know you make. You know, everything's your fault. Have that mentality that everything's your fault. And I feel like that would help you get through things. You don't want to be blaming other people for for things you're not doing. How to tattoo on people with bad skin like acne. I haven't tattooed anyone with that much acne like that to where it would um, cause a problem. Um, so I can't really comment on that, but I don't know if it's really bad, I would probably recommend them to not get tattooed, maybe, I don't know, it's a tough, you know, because at the same time you don't want to be rude, and at the same time if it's that bad to do a tattoo where they're gonna, you're gonna be popping pimples and stuff like that on them while you're tattooing them, I feel like that could be bad also gotta kind of, I don't know, if you're not the boss, maybe go tell the boss to let them know, give them the heads up or something, in case you don't want to be rude or something, I don't know, it's a tough one, it's a tough situation to be in sometimes, you know, even, you know, trying to tell people that certain tattoos won't be good for their skin tones or stuff like that, like it's, you know, if people aren't cool, they might take it wrong. But most people I've dealt with are pretty cool and they're upfront about knowing, like, you know, the, the tattoos they're getting or knowing that you can't do a, ter a certain tattoo a certain way because of the way their body is or their skin tone, stuff like that. And then someone said, how are you getting them solid thick lines before starting powder shading? Um. So I just double line everything. I just double line it with like a three round line or seven round line. The next video I'm gonna do is gonna be on uh, some lettering that's like that. So you guys can check that out. So you guys can see I'm just taking my time. Coming back in with a three round line or sharpening all the edges up. That's what you wanna do. A lot of people don't do that. So just use a thick line. Thick old line, just get all of the edges in. Come back with a three round liner, tighten everything up, get it nice, tight, clean it up. And then I'm coming back with like um with a little bit of lighter flourishes, flourish. I think I'm using an actual like six drop to hit all the extra lines like around it. Kind of like a 3D line. All the small little details. Keep coming back in, cleaning stuff up.
You know, the more time you put into something, the better you're gonna get at it. I feel like I'm still trying to better my lettering as much as I can. Sometimes it's just hard to do lettering in general on the body because the flourishes and everything, they have to be so clean, so nice, and then like right there closer to that armpit part, it's like a weird spot to try to tattoo sometimes. You know, there's a lot of curve right there. You know, dealing with the body and tattooing, it's tough. Sometimes you get people on uh, Instagram or whatever saying, oh, this is crooked or this looks a little off. Like, yeah, it's tough trying to tattoo something that's not flat. It's still tough, even though artists can make it look easy at times, it's still tough. It's hard to do. I'm using a three round liner. Alright, so before this video ends, I'm uh I'ma read you these um it's called the Ten Pillars of Success. I um I found it from this guy um Gerald Peters. I don't know if he actually um came up came up with it himself or he found it and put it out there um also. So it's kinda helped me with, with just in life tattooing and everything. Um Hopefully this helps you guys. Um, so the first one is, there's 10 of them. There's 10 pillars of success. There's 10. So the first one is how you think is everything. Always be positive. Um, think success, not failure. And like be aware of negative people and the environment and stuff, um, environment around you and stuff. Just stay in around positive things. The second one is decide upon your true, uh, your true dream and goals. It's um, write down your goals, you know, really try to manifest them, speak them out loud. Your true goals, not things that you kind of want or you might not chase, things that you want to get. And then third one is take massive action. Um, don't, don't be afraid to get started, just do it. You know, if you're watching this and you haven't started tattooing yet or you're deciding if you want to tattoo, just do it, who cares? You don't want to regret it after, you know, and it's better to try and fail than to like never try it all. And then another one is never stop learning. You know, read books, go back to school, do what you gotta do to keep learning. Keep watching these videos, subscribe down below, follow me on Instagram, TikTok, DM me. And then number five is be persistent and work hard. You know, success is a marathon, not a sprint. And so never give up. Work eight days a week, not five. Five is for average people, create an extra day. Number six, focus your time and money. Don't let other people's, don't let other people or things distract you. What you think about comes about. What you focus on grows. And then number seven, focus on the big picture. Don't let the little details slow you down. You don't have to get it right, just get it going. So even if you're struggling, if people are trying to throw you off your path, like, don't worry about that. Just keep doing what you're doing. Keep pushing. You know, things in life just happen. Just get over it. Keep going. Push as hard as you can. And then number eight, think outside the box. Following the herd is a sure way to mediocrity and poverty. And then number nine. I don't know if I said that one right. Mediocrity. Mediocrity. I could Google that right now. But number nine, deal and communicate with people effectively. No person is an island, learn to understand and motivate others. And that's what I like to do. I like to, you know, put all these videos out for you guys to really learn so I can get feedback, you know, to motivate me, to motivate you, to keep, keep pushing, you know? And then number 10 was like the biggest one for me was take, take full responsibility, you know, like, Radical responsibility, everything is your fault. That's like the secret to to your personal power. If, if you blame yourself for everything that happens, 
then you always figure out a way to fix it. If you're blaming others for everything that happens to you in life, all it's gonna do is just mess you up. You're just gonna be blaming others, saying, oh, it wasn't my fault, oh, it's not my fault that I'm not this. Like, forget about it. You know, just keep, keep doing you, keep pushing, don't give up, you know? You know, life's tough, tattooing is tough, everything's tough, but, you know, you just gotta keep doing it, keep pushing. You know, 10 years from now, you don't wanna regret, like, Adrian told me not to give up and I gave up. You know, don't, don't be that guy. But anyways, I got another video coming up in a couple of days. Um, I'm not sure if I'm gonna do a voiceover. If I do, comment down below. I feel like I want to talk to. I want to talk more about a story that I've been through doing tattoos or something. Let me know if there's like a story or something you guys want to know about that I might have been through or something. And then we'll pick it up in a couple of days in the next video. Peace out.